So I was asked to talk about just the basics about anti-grade dissection reentry. And as Bill said uh, earlier and other people said, if you don't understand this, um, you're not going to be a solid uh, CTO operator. It's one of the basics. It's something that's very learnable and, uh, and it's something that's well supported uh, by the data and the industry. As I said, I've got nothing to disclose. So why is anti-grade dissection reentry needed? <clears throat> because a wire-based strategy often leads to a subintimal wire position, particularly in real long lesions greater than 20 millimeters. And previous techniques, such as STAR or LAST, uh, were often unsuccessful, at least in the long term. So what is it? It's a technique that utilizes the subintimal space to advance past the CTO in a controlled fashion. This generally allows for a predictable and a reproducible reentry into the true lumen distally. And this generally uses uh, equipment specifically designed for anti-grade dissection reentry. So when is it the first choice? When the proximal cap is unambiguous is uh, one of the main reasons when you know where to go, and when the CTO is long. If it's short, you can generally go with a wire escalation strategy, but if it's long, chances are very good you're going to end up in the subintimal space anyway. And when the distal cap is not at an important bifurcation, meaning that there's a good landing zone, when the distal vessel is not diffusely diseased or underfilled, although, uh, as Bill showed earlier, as you progress with these techniques, you can do blind sticks on these people based on what the wire feels like, even if you can't see the true lumen, and particularly when there are no good interventional collaterals. Well, the equipment, uh, as you guys have seen before uh, earlier, uh, the cross boss is the, the initial catheter that we use in these cases to cross. And it's designed to quickly and safely deliver a guide wire to the true lumen or to the subintimal space beyond the CTO. It's advanced by a fast spin technique. Bill was showing that. You rotate it back and forth as fast as you possibly can uh, with a minimum of uh, forward pressure. It's got an atraumatic distal tip and it's uh, moved over an 014 guide wire. The Stingray system is uh, the balloon that's advanced after the cross boss. And that, that's designed to target and re-enter the true lumen from a sub-intimal position. It's a flat, uh, self-orienting balloon with 180 degree opposed and offset exit ports for selective wire re-entry. Uh, the Stingray wire is a 14 thousandths of an inch wire and uh, with a re-entry probe at the tip. It's a very stiff tipped wire as well. It's similar to a Confianza Pro 12 with the exception of that distal tip. And this is uh, how it works. Um, this is obviously idealized, but the uh, cross boss is advanced generally by itself uh, with a fast spin technique. It's exchanged for a wire. We use a Miracle Bro 12 or a 6 wire left in place, trapped to manage and keep that dissection plane as small as possible. The balloons then advance, the stingray balloon is advanced and meticulous preps in, important beforehand, and it orients itself. Uh, and based on generally uh, angiography from the retrograde side, you can tell which port or which direction you want the stingray wire to go. And in this case, it went out the first port, which was the incorrect lumen, and out the second port, uh, which pierced through the dissection, uh, the subintima, into the true lumen. Um, generally, we won't continue on with the stingray wire. The reason for that is that the stingray wire often will continue to go straight and just go straight into the other side of the, of the vessel, and you won't actually know that you've gone into the true lumen. So you'll go through, you'll actually go through the true lumen. So you need something a little less traumatic uh, to get through. Um, this is one uh, case uh, of anti-grade dissection, a 65-year-old female, angina on maximal medications. She's got an abnormal stress echocardiogram and an obvious uh, right coronary artery CTO. The uh, proximal cap is somewhat uh, ambiguous, but I think it was, it was clear from other views uh, that we could uh, see where the side branches came off and where a good starting point was. 
this is a cross boss. It needed to have an anchor balloon placed. Sometimes uh, we'll use guideliners, of course, uh, if, if that fits into the vessel, uh, to get it through the proximal cap. And you notice that the uh, cross boss straightens the wire, uh, straightens the artery out. And that's as uh, people were pointing out earlier, you need to be very careful that you're actually still in the architecture of the vessel. So uh, by uh, directional um, offset uh, views, uh, at least to check the course, are important. It's also very important to move the cross boss in a small in small increments. And there's a the torquing device can be uh, moved, and so you put it back about 10 millimeters at a time from the uh, hemostatic device, so that the vessel does so that the cross boss doesn't go too far. It's the only time you'll get into into difficulties or dangers with the cross boss is if it accidentally goes too far out a side branch and then you can have distal perforation because it just overwhelms the vessel. You won't perforate in big vessels and it will tend to follow it, but you need, you need to watch it because it straightens the vessel out. So as I said, uh, this is the REO view. We can tell clearly that we're in the architecture of the vessel. Take it further down here and again, this vessel is straightened out. But with retrograde injections, you can tell that you're still in the architecture following uh, the right path. This is a miracle bro wire. We use a trapping technique. Uh, it, you don't put a bend on the wire. You just want it to sit and not move so that you don't make the subintimal dissection larger, create it, which creates a hematoma, which closes off or makes smaller your distal true lumen. You want your distal true lumen to be as big as possible so that you have the biggest target you ha can have to aim for. Now that's a stingray wire, uh, or stingray balloon, excuse me. Um, you can tell the two uh, distal markers on it. Right in front of those two markers are where the ports are. You can't tell which direction the port is going until you advance a wire out of it. Um, so that's the stingray by itself. Oftentimes you'll look at it in a different view to uh, make certain that your um, a, uh, you have a good view of where the wire is coming out. So the stingray, and that's the stingray wire that's been advanced there. That's the stingray wire that's, enter, uh, that's exiting the distal port. It's the stick. Uh, it doesn't actually look like it's uh, in the true lumen there. But when it's swapped out, uh, generally, most people will use a Pilot 200. It's got a little bit of TIF stiffness, but it's a lubricious uh, hydrophil uh, hydrophilic uh, polymer jacket uh, wire uh, that will actually go through. You make a bend identical to uh, the bend that's on the um, wire already in the stingray. Sometimes you'll add a more proximal bend to that to give it a little bit more reach. And so that's the swap, the stick and swap, and that's the final uh, result, at least in this case. So uh, take homes on this um, are really, the, it's a fa you spin as fast as you can, you advance the cross boss in very short advances. Uh, check to make sure that you're in the architecture. That's the only time that you'll get into trouble is if you go too, if you advance too far without checking. Control your dissection size. Do everything you can. Like Bill was saying earlier today, he used a knuckle wire to get down past the CTO, but then to get to the landing zone, you finish with the cross boss because it's a one millimeter catheter that keeps your dissection very small. Uh, you, you avoid anti-grade injections because that would cause a hydraulic dissection. Um, the stick and swap is uh, imperative. You move the stingray into different positions if you're unsuccessful. In, in, uh, even in the same plane, you just advance it uh, back and forth. Uh, and if you're una unable to visualize, as uh, Manos uh, uh, devised, the double blind stick and swap, where you just go out both sides with your Stingray wire, and then you go out both sides with your Pilot 200 wire, and if any of them feel good, then you confirm uh, with a retrograde injection. So, thank you. Thank you, Nick. That was a very that was a great presentation.